Hi, so now I'm back with uh, yet another video. And there have been, the reason that it took so long before the last video, uh, since the last video is that there's been some major developments, basically. And well, let's start out. Well, as I told you in the last video, on March the 7th, we were going to the dealer and signed the lease and this and that. So, said and done. We arrived at the dealer, well, let's put it this way. We went to the dealer, it was signed the contract around four o'clock in the afternoon. No problem, you know, papers and everything. You know, she chose color, chose trim level, chose if we wanted to have studded or non-studded winter tires during the lease period, and so on. It signed the contract, left, and then we went to my mom's house around six o'clock in that at that you know same day two hours later basically the dealer called and told us that you know the deal the the leasing deal just didn't go through and we were like why not and he said well because uh, the person that's going to stand on the lease does not have a driver's license and we were like and so what because we've been told you know over the six last six months when we've been talking to the dealer you know, back and forth, you know, about, you know, charging and home charging and this and that. We've been very clear with that. The person that is going to be, be on the leasing contract, on the contract here, uh, does not have a Swedish, or doesn't have a driver's license. I have a driver's license in our family. My girlfriend doesn't. And they're like, well, and he's like, every time we talk to him, oh, that's not a problem. Of course not. Of course you can lease a car. I mean, seriously, you can buy a car and don't, you know, need the driver's license. We're like, oh. Okay, a little great. So we got everything, you know, charging, set up at home, and, you know, this and that. But he called and said, you know, that's, and he said that it's a new rule uh, that came into effect, you know, about three weeks prior to, you know, to us signing the contract. And we're like, okay. So, and we, I said, you know, but can't you, isn't there a solution? Can, can we, can't you make a um, you know, leasing contract in house or something? You know, there could be a solution. Seriously, we, we, paid for our charging equipment and this and that. So, well, he said, well, okay, I'm going to get back to you, you know, tomorrow, the next day. So basically the 8th, Tuesday the 8th. And, you know, he's, <coughs> okay. So we hang up and Mar next day arrives in the afternoon. And I start thinking, maybe I should call, you know, this the leasing company, uh, something there, bank. And I'm like, oh yeah, I called them. So I call them up and I tell them the whole story, you know, this and that. And they tell us, and they say to me that, you know, yeah, sure. There, there's this new thing that you, you need to have a driver's license to be able to get a leasing contract. But then she tells me something really stunning. She's like, well, that rule has been in effect over six months. So that's like before you guys started, you know, talking to the Nissan, Nissan dealer. And we're like, what? What the fuck? Seriously? Okay. <laughs> so the, the dealer is basically lying, right? I, you know, lying us. Yeah, he's lying. So we're like, okay. And and we let the days go by, basically, because you know, we just do that, and we're like, well, you know, maybe you know, let, let give him a couple of days. So we're at the eighth of eighth of March at this point, Tuesday. So, we let the week pass. On the 16th of March, that's Wednesday, the week, the following week, we had said, this guy hasn't called us back. You know, let, let's go to the dealer and talk to him. Let's see what's going on. Maybe they'll find a solution. You know, it's, it's taking time. So we go there, go to the, to the local Nissan dealer. And first off, the guy's not there. So we end up, you know, going up to upstairs to the Volvo part of the store. And he's, the guy at Volvo, at Volvo is real nice. He's like, Hey guys, you want coffee? You know, you want some ice cream with that? I mean, you know, tell them the whole story with the problem that we're facing here because we, you know, bought, some, you know, charging solution and this and that. And I promised my mom to buy that she can buy my car, you know, my gas car. So we're really in a bind here. And this, this guy's like, okay. Yeah, but, you know, after well, a total of like half an hour. The Nissan dealer arrives after, you know, the Volvo guy called him and asked him, where are you, man? I mean, seriously, you got to get here. You've got, got customers here. You've got your Leaf customers here. Come on, seriously. 
So he arrives and we talk to him, and he's like, yeah, sure, what not, diddly diddly. And, and well, and it turns out he's like, well, there's no solution. He he tells us that he's talked to the, to his, you know, the Volvo financing. You know, Volvo is the, it's a Volvo dealer, their financing department, and and he tells me that you know, it's going to be like double the price of the Nissan lease leasing price if they're going to do it in-house because, you know, they need to make a profit and they need to buy a car and they're able to sell it and this and that. And he tells me that, you know, Nissan loses a lot of money on their leasing contracts because they're so cheap on it because they want cars out on the road. <clears throat> and, well, anyways, what happens is it, it, there's just no way to get this done. And we ask him, you know, but this, um, this, you know, the reason that I can't lease the car is that my income is too low. You need to clear, you know, the, they, they check you out and check out your income and this and that. And, and that's, you know, one of the founding rules. You, know, you need to clear that credit check, so to speak. And I make a little bit too, too little money for that. So, but I, but I do have a driver's license. So we ask the, the Nissan dealer here, and think, but, but what if we, what if we give you you know, the total sum of the lease, you know, take the monthly fee and, and you know, divide that, you know, just take it times 24. And, you know, that sum, if, if we pay you or, you know, Santander bank, bank that, that money, I mean, there's no, I mean, it doesn't really matter if we have an income that is lower or anything because, you know, then you basically have all your money. And he's like, well, that doesn't seem like a problem, does it? No, I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll talk to them. I'll, I'll talk to. To something there, bank, and, you know what? I'll get back to you tomorrow, so the day after. So that's like Thursday, you know, two days ago. And Thursday arrives, and lo and behold, not a single peep from that, seriously. Fucking Nissan dealer. Seriously, what the hell? That's the second time he's not got, gotten back. And we start just going, oh, what the hell? So in the evening there, me and my girlfriend, and I'm just looking around on the internet, you know, looking at cars and going, you know what? Hmm, okay. So, so I'm just looking around, you know, going, you know, wondering how much, you know, it's, it's looking at Nissan Leafs. I don't know why I started doing that. I was like, let's look at it. And lo and behold, on the evening there, I find a 24 kilowatt 2015 Accenta Nissan Leaf with you know, the same color that we were looking at and everything. And it's like, okay, so it costs, um, well, this, I'm going to give you the price that we got, you know, but it, it's not that much lower than, you know, what the dealer was asking for the car. But basically, I, I saw that he had two cars. Uh, and it, as I said, it had 19,869 kilometers on the clock or 12,346 miles uh, on the clock. So that's not bad for 2015. And it was a previous demo car. So, okay, well, and I saw that he had that car and then he had a silver one, you know, the same accent, a 24 kilowatt version 2015. And, and, and that one had only done, well, what was it like? 5,000 kilometers, so I'm guessing in miles, well, yeah, well, anyways, and, but that car was sold, so he told me, you know what, you can get this, the right one, you can get it for the same price, and we got even a little bit lower, and the price that he, you know, we got down to was 232,000 Swedish crowns, or 25,043 euros, or 28,261 US dollars, or, 19,562 British pounds. So that's what we, we got down to. Because we called him the day after. Maybe because the thing is, we started looking at it. And, you know, how much does it actually cost? And we called the dealer, you know, how, how much would we get down if you, get, you take a loan and you know, buy the car? All right. And I know the depreciation of this, but the depreciation of this car, you know, the first year was horrendous. Basically, they told me that, you know, they, they actually, well, I didn't really go into detail with the dealer about that. But anyways, and, you know, we were like, but that's like a lot less money. So it really has lost a lot of the money because that, you know, the different difference between what we pay for the car and, you know, the leasing cost. You know, since the leasing cost, when you lease a car, is you, you pay 
the money that the car you loses and depreci no, depreci depreciates during those two years you lease it. But this sum was a lot lower. A lot lower in one year, the sum had gone down. And the miles on the car, I mean, when you do... Uh, when you lease the car, you, at least in the way we were looking at, we, you were getting, you know, 10,000 kilometers more on it, on the lease. So after two years, so we were just like, it's a real low price. Very good, very good. And started looking at, you know, financing options. You know, how much is this car going to cost us? And we realized that our monthly cost, if we buy the car, you know, take a loan on well, the amount of time that we decided to take, was seven years. And that was basically, you know, because in a couple of years we're still going to get, uh, I'm going to get some money to, you know, uh, it's going to come my way when it comes to car buying and whatnot. So we're just thinking, hey, the three years, in three years' time, we're going to have more money, and you know we can use this car and you know hand it into the dealer, get a decent chunk of money for it. So said and done, we talked to the dealer. They made a credit check and checked out my girlfriend, and they were like, no, no problem, you, you can definitely buy this car. Uh, we will give you the loan and you know the financing and everything is done. Like and this is like in a period of like three hours, like from noon to like three o'clock in the afternoon. I called back and forth with, with the dealer. Because first we were looking at one option of financing and this, and then we called the dealer and said, you know, we have the financing done. And he then said, well, our financing solution, you know, the thing is to our, the people that we use for financing, they want us to, you know, match your interest rates and whatnot. So we got interest rate lower than the first one. Not a lot, it's like dot one percent or whatever but so it got lower so we're like okay sure we'll, we'll go with you we don't care who we're paying for a loan as long as you know you get the best price so yeah so we did that that was it and you know and so i called it and this is on the 18th by the way so i mean i called the dealer and you know made it all happen and and he tells me, okay, everything's done. Sure. The only downside is like, he's like, well, I, I work on Monday. I, I'm not at work on Monday, uh, which is the 19th. I don't know. No, of course not. On 21st. So when he's like, but, you know, Tuesday through, uh, Tuesday through Friday, you know, I'm working, no problem. And you gotta remember, this dealer is located in Malmö. It's in the su most southern parts of Sweden. It's a, it's a drive that is, so it's, it's a decent way to go, but it's basically from Malmö to our place, if you look at, you know, charging and you know, whatnot, it's a drive of 760 kilometers uh, or 472 miles. So, but the thing is, so we were like, how are we going to get down there? So today, on the 19th, we booked a night train from Mora to Malmö. Uh, we booked the train, you know, we were leaving at 6.45 in the evening on the 21st, on Monday 21st. And we'll be arriving in Malmö the following day, it's 22nd of March, uh, at 6.48 in the morning. It's a night train, so you have your, you can sleep and whatnot. And so, uh, the drive to Malmö is if you're gonna drive you no know, either way it's as I said it's 472 miles approximately it will take you driving times like eight hours you know and we you know we counted on that and started looking at I started looking yesterday like at charging you know and I know since I have the clever card and you know there's all these you know, char char you know what they call all these sites but you know charge maps charge point whatever they're called in the maps uh, and it was really it's no problem driving home uh, the added time for charging, if I and I'm counting like 40 minutes per charge here, is like 280 minutes. It's like four and a half hours. But the fact of the matter is, a couple of them, uh, like two of them, will not need to be that that long. It's like you don't need 40 minutes. You're you're going to end up needing like, you know, the second to last charge will be. You know, we just need to fill up so we get another 40. 40. Well, it's like. 40 kilometers could it be yeah well some, something like that 45 kilometers so you can just charge up for like 10 15 minutes not even that probably just to get to your last charger in Borlanga the uh, Shadow McQuick charger there and well all the chargers I looked at are Shadow McQuick chargers and total amount of time as I said you know 
eight hours approximately, a little, according to the Google Maps one, that's like seven hours, something, something. Uh, then you add like about, you know, approximately, as I said, 280 minutes, that's four and a half hours, basically, in charge times, but probably more towards the four hour mark. So this whole process will take 12 hours to get home. And, you know, the bizarre thing here is that we're going to start our, you know, leaf owning experience with what most people would consider a decently long drive, especially in an electric car. I mean, this is the thing that people talk about when they start, you know, dreading things about, you know, EVs and you're like, oh, but, but if you know, if, what if there's no chargers? When, how do you find out this and that? It's real hard to get, you know, know that and range is so low and what if you run out and and all that so it's, it's it became apparent to me and my girlfriend yesterday you know when it, was, when it was all said and done with the dealer that you know we actually were really starting out in the in the totally opposite direction of what many people do when they you know lease or buy a electric car you tend to like buy the car at your local, local dealer and then you keep on driving around your you know your neighborhood you know, going into town, and then you start, you know, white, as I understand it, if you look at a lot of YouTube clips, you know, people start widening the circle that they drive, because they start, start looking online, you know, at charge maps, and, you know, where, where are the chargers, where can I charge it, and this and that, so you start, you know, you keep on, you start wide, you know, widening your circle of where you drive, based on the fact that you get more knowledge, but we're really starting in the totally opposite direction, and, I mean, one of the reasons for that is that I've been, you know, doing a lot of the research with the charging station and seeing, you know, looking at short maps and different, you know, companies that have, you know, shadow mode chargers, where they have them and this and that. So I was, I, I feel that I'm enlightened in a way, you know, I have a lot of knowledge about EVs and, you know, the EV charging networks and whatnot that most people probably take some time to accumulate. Not that I'm saying that people take time for that, but the thing is, I'm fascinated by many times that people get like interested. I want an EV and then buy an EV and then start looking at, you know, can I charge the car? Where can I drive? How far can I go? And I, I'm guessing a lot of those people that do YouTube videos, of course, have done the same thing as I've done, you know, looked at online and, you know, curiosity started off there and then you got the car. And But when you look at the YouTube clips, you get the feel that they bought the car and then they start, you know, finding all these different charge websites, you know, where they tell you where the charters are and whatnot, or, or mobile apps or whatever. So that's what happened. So to conclude, actually, I don't know, getting a pretty decently short video here. Well, no, it's not short, short, but anyways, we're going to, as I said, we're going to buy a 2015 t previously used 24 kilowatt Nissan Leaf with 12,346 miles on the clock. We're paying 25,043 euros for it, 28,261 US dollars, or 19,562 British pounds for it. And we're leaving on the night train this March, 21st of March, which is this Monday at 8.45 in the evening. And then we're arriving in Malmö where we're picking up the car at the next day at 20, 22nd of March at 6.48 in the morning. And then we're going to go to the dealer. You know, he's, he's open up at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. So we get some breakfast in. Then we'll start a drive home, which is a 472-mile drive or 760 kilometers approximately somewhat. And it's going to take us 12 hours. So we're going to be home, you know, at you know, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening the same day, 22nd of March, and hopefully we'll, you know, when, when the 22nd of March of 2016 ends, we're going to be the proud owners of a red metallic 2015 Nissan Accenta Nissan Leaf. It's, it's mind-boggling, and we've had so many problems, you know, with, as I said in previous videos, you know, with charging solutions, and and I'm really, you know, going ahead of myself here because I still feel that there's something that's going to go wrong. It's going to fuck up in some way because right now, I mean, it's been like that. I mean, we started off with the charging solution and, you know, then, and then our, then our, you know, landlord, what are we, how are we going to do this? Can we do this? And once that was sorted, we started, you know, went to the dealer and, and the dealer totally fucked up. I mean, even the, the company that gave, you know, has the leases, you know, sometimes, sometimes their bank, 
I mean, they told us, you know, Nissan has really fucked up big time in Mura, so they need to fix you up with a in-house contract or something. They, they, they need to fix this because they're to blame here. You're not to blame. You've done everything in your power to do things the right way. You asked the right questions. I mean, there's no reason to feel blame here. That's what they told us. And that's exactly what we feel. And that, that really pisses me off even, even more because, you know, a Nissan dealer in Sweden, Hirimura Akrisa, had gone down to this guy and told him that, you know, I found this car in Malmö and we could buy it from him. And then they would get it here on you know, in a couple of weeks on a trailer. But we just don't feel any trust for that guy anymore. He, he, he screwed us over royally, you know, more than once. So we just said, fuck this ship. We're, we're, we're going to Malmö. We're going to pick up the car ourselves. And, and that's going to be the end of it. We're never going to, um, we're never going to buy a car from that dealer again. No fucking way. I mean, in three years time when we decide if we want to get, uh, two or three years time when we decide if we want to get in, you know, next generation of electric cars, be it the Tesla Model 3 or, you know, next generation Nissan Leaf or longer range or whatever, we're not going to, we're definitely going to, we can go to Nissan here more, but I'm just going to tell these guys that, you know, take, take some of the, some guy from Volvo or whatever, Volvo department and bring him down here because this guy fucked us over good in 2016. And we're just not, we're not interested in giving him any kind of bonuses or bumps for selling new cars. Especially not to us. I mean, seriously. This guy's, it's just, it's horrendous. But, you know, so we're in a positive note here, really positive note. But still feel, having the feeling that this is going to fuck up in some way. Because there's been so ridiculously many hurdles along the way. And I know that people, that's one of the main reasons people don't want electric cars. Because... It's such, it can be such a hassle, but, well, as it feels right now, we've, we've prevailed and we've pulled through, and there's going to be a ton of Nissan Leaf videos coming out, you know, this fall, uh, the spring, the summer, and, you know, long trips, short trips, we're going to go to the airport, we're going to go fly away on vacation in, in, like, in two months, and, you know, driving there, it's just awesome. But, you know, I'll get back to you in the next video, and, you know, thumbs up to everyone. Hells yeah. Goodbye.